Good morning. This is our last lesson for the semester, so uh, before I get started, I'm going to say I hope everyone's doing all right out there. Um, in going over this last section of the book, um, it could have been a two-day lesson, so I'm only going to teach one day of it, and I'm only going to assign problems that deal with what I teach today. So um, let me uh, go ahead and talk about our goals, and then we'll just jump right into it and Hopefully it makes sense and uh, you know this like I said this is the last lesson so let me make sure I got everything in the screen Okay, that looks good And here we go. All right, so the first goal that we're going to talk about today is We're going to define kites and trapezoids our second goal is going to be to discover properties of kites and isosceles trapezoids So I'm going to start off by defining a kite and then we're going to discover properties of this kite um so a kite is a quadrilateral, which is a four-sided shape with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. No congruent opposite sides. So what that means is these two sides would be congruent because they're consecutive. These two sides would be congruent because they're consecutive. No opposite sides are congruent. So these can't be the same as this and these can't be the same as that. If they were, we would have a parallelogram. All right, so um, again, what, what ends up, what our, our argument style, our argument technique falls back into finding the identical triangles and then understanding um, what that implies about the shape. So as of now, we, we don't have any congruent triangles and let's just um, start figuring out how we can make identical triangles. If I was to connect these vertexes, vertices, I will not be able to argue that the triangle above is the same as the triangle below. So if I connect these vertices, let's see how straight of a line I can draw. I can very quickly say that I have two identical triangles by side, side, side. Okay. Um, and let's, let's, let's see what this implies. Okay. Um, so what this tells me about my my kite is I'm going to have a pair of opposite congruent angles. Remember, I couldn't make an identical triangles going in this direction, so I can't say that these opposite angles are congruent. And so that's also what differentiates it from a parallelogram. So with a kite, we get one pair of congruent opposite angles. Okay. Now, we also do get another result. Let me, let me actually add to this. So that's my uh, congruent angles. Um, we get another um, result from these identical triangles. And the other result that we get are the non-congruent opposite angles actually are bisected. And remember, bisected means cut in half. So these, this angle at the top, because these triangles are identical, that means that these angles must be the same. So what happened was this bigger angle got cut into two equal parts. So kites have this property where a diagonal makes um, two congruent triangles, which allows us to conclu conclude that we have one pair of congruent opposite angles, which allows us to conclude the other pair of opposite angles are bisected, right? And again, this argument style goes back to corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So the other pair of opposite angles are bisected. Okay, so this is what we can get out of this one diagonal. Okay, I'm going to change color here. And I'm going to draw the other diagonal. Okay. So if I was to draw this diagonal, I now have two little triangles on the top, which I can argue that these two little triangles on the top are congruent because of side, angle, side, right? And so what that means is that this diagonal got bisected. Okay, 
Again, I couldn't argue, let's go back to the first one. I couldn't argue that this horizontal diagonal made these triangles identical. So this diagonal does not get bisected. This diagonal gets bisected. So another property of a kite is that we have one bisected diagonal. Okay, so let me uh, just save these marks for the bisected diagonals. So that's our third property of a kite. And our last property of the kite is actually pretty, um, again, all of these come from corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, C, P, C, T, C. Now, again, I have this little triangle that's the same as this little triangle, and I have a line, right? So that means that this angle right here and this angle right here, they have to add up to 180 degrees. And since both angles are in the same position of identical triangles, both angles have to be the same. And two identical angles that add to, 90 de or add to 180 degrees must both be 90 degrees. So their last property of a kite is that the diagonals are perpendicular, right? So again, um, a kite is a quadrilateral quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. These sides are consecutive and congruent. These sides are consecutive and congruent. And none of the opposite sides are um, congruent. We saw that when we drew the vertical diagonal, we got two identical triangles, and we could see that the angles that are actually made by the um, consecutive non-congruent sides are congruent. Um, we also were able to reason that the other pair of opposite angles were bisected. Um, when we drew our horizontal diagonal, we saw that we created two identical triangles again, and we were able to reason that this diagonal was also bisected. And our last observation, again using the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, is that these angles must be right angles, so the diagonals themselves must be um, perpendicular, make right angles. So I'm going to check off everything for kites. Okay, now the next, um, the last part of our goal today is going to be um, define a trapezoid and discover properties of kites. I should have said define a isosceles trapezoid. My bad. Um, but an isosceles trapezoid is a quadrilateral, which is a four-sided shape. I think I spelled that wrong. Which means I spe spelled this one wrong. All right, so again, an isosceles triangle, a isosceles trapezoid. There's, there's a reason why we use that word twice. The isosceles trapezoid is a quadrilateral with a pair of parallel opposite sides. The other pair of opposite sides are congruent, right? So here are my pair of parallel opposite sides. My other pair of opposite sides are congruent. These guys can't be parallel. If they're parallel, then we go have a parallelogram. We have to, we have a different shape here, so it's going to do different things. So it's actually really kind of a um, a neat little proof or an argument that that we we use to um to uh, how do I say uh, develop the properties of the trapezoid, right? A sausage trapezoid. So, um, what I'm going to do for this argument is I'm going to, through this point, I'm going to make a line that's parallel to this. All right, so now I have two pairs of uh, parallel opposite sides. So, I just made a little parallelogram inside of my sausage trapezoid. And what that means is that since this little guy is now a parallelogram, that means that this guy must be the same as this guy, right? And since this is the same as this, these sides are congruent, and this side is congruent to this, right? So um, there, uh, 
just please disregard the last part. So I've made a little, um, I, I've, I've argued that these are, congr this, there's a reason for this, and I'm, I'm stumbling over my words here. I'm thinking of too many things at once. All right, so we've, we've argued that this has to be the same as this. Okay, and that, that's going to come to play here in a second. Now, remember, these are parallel. Okay? So, when I have parallel, um, parallel, my corresponding angles, they have to be equal. Right, so these angles that I'm putting circles at, they have to be equal. Equal. That's these angles. So I know that this angle has to be equal to that angle. Okay. And the reason why I needed this side to be the same as this side is we've gotten to the idea of the isosceles triangle, right? So if I have um, an isosceles triangle, that means that the base angles are the same, right? So since this angle is the same as this angle, is that, that means that you can argue that this angle ultimately must be the same as this angle. So just like in a, a Celsius triangle, a Celsius trapezoids have base angles. And this angle has to be the same as this angle. All right? So I'm going to erase this, and this is one of our properties. Okay, so um, they're going to have congruent. And let me, I'm, I'm really struggling on this one. Congruent. Maybe I'm excited this is the last lesson of the school year. Congruent base angles. Now I'm saying base angles, and you, and you might think it's plural because it's these two. There's a little bit more here. Remember, this angle and this angle, these are same side interior. And if they're same side interior of parallel lines, they must add to 180. Same with these two angles. And so if this angle and whatever this is adds to 180, and this is the same, we can conclude that this set of angles must also be congruent, right? So we actually use a um, parallelogram to um, start our arguments here. Now we can um, go and start using our, uh, our uh, what's it called? Our uh, congruent triangles. So this one's going to be a little hard to see. Okay. It's going to be a little hard to see. So I'll draw one triangle in blue, which is this guy. All right, and I, I can say that that triangle in blue is going to be the same as this triangle in red. And the reason why I can say that is I'm going to have side angle side, right? And the, the reason why this is important is we can actually argue that this diagonal must be the same as that diagonal. Because these are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So, isosceles trapezoids have equal base angles. They have equal diagonals. Right. And the diagonals, we can't argue that they bisect each other. They don't. They don't. All right. So, that finishes our lessons for the school year. I was getting a little excited. I was... Um, had my eye on the prize, not on, not on the task at hand. So <laughs> let me go back and, and uh, just remind you, quadrilateral with a pair of parallel opposite sides, um, and the other sides have to be congruent. We made a parallelogram. We got congruent opposite, I'm sorry, we got congruent corresponding angles. We got this side to be the same as that side. So we got, through a transitive argument, we got congruent base angles. We also reasoned these angles would be the same. We then made our triangles. It's a little hard to see, um, but this triangle is the same as this triangle by, by uh, side, angle, side. And we can conclude finally that our diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid must be congruent. So that finishes our lessons. Um, again, I hope everyone's doing all right out there. Let's uh, do our homework assignments. And I will um, post this video later. Have a great summer, guys.